I cannot. Okay, it's way past midnight. But I am 86% through the song of Achilles. I knew that something was going to happen. I knew that Patroclus was going to wear Achilles, um, his armor, because when I was reading the, the characters at the back of the book, it was said that Patroclus will wear Achilles' armor so that, like, to trick, to trick the Trojans. The whole time, I thought that Patroclus would be wear, will be wearing the armor without Achilles knowing, but my mind just got blown because Achilles helped Patroclus wear the armor. Dude, he helped Patroclus wear the armor. He's offering him, serving him on the plate to the enemies. He is going to regret this big time. What the heck? Patroclus is doing a good job right now. He actually killed Zeus's son. But it's time to escape him. So like he's not really supposed to be fight to be fighting in the first place. Achilles told him not to fight because probably he will give himself away if it's so obvious that he can't throw his spears properly, but he was able to kill multiple people with a spear. I'm so proud of Patroclus. Like, he can fight. Feels like he's just to heal people. And I think become, being a healer helped him a lot because he knows which parts to target. He's dead. The driver of the chariot, in his panic, he drove closer to Troy. And when Patroclus saw the wall, he jumped from the chariot, ran to the wall, tried to climb. And when he was climbing, his idea was to capture Helen himself. And then bring Helen back to the camp, bring her back to Menelaus, so that the war will end. No more killing. So I think he's pretty delirious. Maybe he is enraptured by this moment of finally, like after 10 years, they will be able to go back home and live their lives. But the god Apollo sees him climbing up and then basically pushes him off the wall. Like his helmet cracks and then the people see that he is not actually Achilles, but rather someone else. <laughs> What was particularly sad was when the thought of Patroclus, I can't let Hector kill me because if Hector kills me, surely Achilles will kill him. If he is dead, then Achilles will also die. So, yeah. So anyway, Hector kills him. Patroclus is dead now. This whole book is told in Patroclus' perspective. So let's see how it's going to happen. It is only when his hand comes up empty that he remembers he gave the sword to me. To me? Okay, so Patroclus is still narrating this part. He seizes his hair in his hands and yanks it from his head. Golden strands fall onto the body corpse. Patroclus, he says. Patroclus. Patroclus. Over and over until it is sound only. Zayas runs towards us, face contorted. She bends over the body, her lovely dark eyes spilling water warm as rain. She covers her face with her hands and wails. Who did this? His voice as if I'm roping and cracked and broken. Hector, Menelaus said. Achilles seizes his giant ash spear and tries to tear free from the arms that hold him. Odysseus grabs his shoulders. Tomorrow, he is gone inside the city. Tomorrow, listen to me, Pilates. Tomorrow, you can kill him. I swear it. Now you must eat and rest. Achilles weeps. He cradles me and will not eat, nor speak a word other than my name. I see his face as if through water, as a fish sees the sun. His tears fall, but I cannot wipe them away. This is my element now, the half-life of the unburied spirit. His mother comes. I hear her. The sound of waves breaking on shore. If I disgusted her when I was alive, it is worse to find my corpse in her aunt, the son's arms. He is dead, she says in her flat voice. Hector is dead, he says. Tomorrow, you have no armor. I do not need any. His teeth show. It is an effort to speak. She reaches, pale and cool, to take his hands from me. He did it to himself, she says. Do not touch me. She draws back, watching him cradle me in his arms. I will bring you armor, she says. 
Like, she speaks so harshly against Patroclus, knowing that her son loves Patroclus. Automedon, I'm not gone. At last, Odysseus. Agamemnon has come to see you and returned the girl. What? Why? Wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute. They're returning the girl. After Achilles is going to fight already. These stupid kings, man. Truly, a god must have snatched our wits from us to set us so at odds. No, it wasn't the gods. It was your hubris. <laughs> but that is over now, and we are allies once more. Agamemnon hesitates. Prince Achilles, I hear you will fight tomorrow. Yes, the suddenness of his answer startles them. Very good, that is very good. Agamemnon waits another moment. And you will fight after that also. If you wish, Achilles answers. I do not care. I will be dead soon. I was sorry to hear of Patroclus' death. He fought bravely today. Did you hear he killed Sarpedon? He did. Achilles' eyes left. They are bloodshot and dead. I wish he had let you all die. Exactly. That is why... Patrick was tried in the first place is because he doesn't want the people, these innocent people, to die. And he was begging Achilles to like finally save the people. But Achilles, being proud of himself, of his reputation, of his this prophecy, of his name being Aristosakion. And now he says, I wish he had let you all die. Briseis is kneeling by my body. She has brought water and cloth and washes the cloth and dirt from my skin. Her hands are gentle as though she washes a baby, not a dead thing. Achilles opens the tent and their eyes meet over my body. Get away from him, he says. I'm almost finished. He does not deserve to lie in filth. I will not have your hands on him. Her eyes are sharp with tears. Do you think you're the only one who loved him? Get out. Get out. <gasps> Oh, burn, burn, burn. Wait, 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 wait. So Achilles said, get out, get out. Isaiah said, you care more for him in death than in life. Her voice is better with grief. How could you have let him go? You knew he could not fight. The sound that comes from him is hardly human. I tried to stop him. I told him not to leave the beach. You are the one who made him go. He fought to save you and your darling reputation because he could not bear to see you suffer. Oh my gosh. This, this section needs to have its own, like, detail. Because it's all truth. It's all truth. No lies detected. No lies detected. I love Bizet's character here. He weeps as he lifts me onto our bed. My corpse sags. It is warm in the tent, and the smell will come soon. He does not seem to care. He holds me all night long, pressing my cold hands to his mouth. At dawn, his mother returns with a shield and sword and breastplate, newly minted from still warm bronze. She watches him arm and does not try to speak to him. Okay. Clear my eyes. Hector's eyes are wide, but he will run no longer. He says, grant me this. Give my body to my family when you have killed me. Achilles makes a sound like joking. There are no bargains between lions and men. I will kill you and eat you raw. You act like a child. I told Pyrus is more of a man than you. Pyrus, he will come, and Troy will fall. The city cannot be taken without him, the fates say. Her face glows. What? See? I knew it. You would bring him here? He is the next Aristos Akayon. Oh. Her black eyes seem to contract like dying stars. I am glad that he is dead. Oh my gosh. You know what? Thetis is so mean. Like, she's, she's always been mean, but this is too much. It is the last thing she will ever say to him. Okay. So the last thing to tell your son, like, after you're done with him, you're going to tell him that you hated 
the man, the person he loved. Liam's eyes find the other body, mine, lying on the bed. He hesitates. That is your friend? Phil Patos, Achilles said shortly. Most beloved, best of men, and slaughtered by your son. He is the most beloved. <laughs> okay. The next day, he carries me to the pyre. Besides, and the myrmidons watches. He places me on the wood and strikes the flint. The flames surround me, and I feel myself slipping further from life, fitting to the only the faintest shiver in the air. I yearn for the darkness and silence of the underworld where I can rest. He collects my ashes himself, though this is a woman's duty. He puts them in a golden urn, the finest in our camp, and turns to watching the reef. When I am dead, I charge you to mingle our ashes and bury us together. Within the walls of Troy, a bow is strung quickly by rushing hands. An arrow is selected, and princely feet hurry upstairs to a tower that tilts over a battlefield of dead and dying, where a god is waiting. It is easy for Paris to find his target. The man moves slowly, like a lion grown, wounded, and sick, but his gold hair is unmistakable. Paris knocks his arrow. Where do I aim? I heard he was invulnerable. Except for... He's a man. Apollo says, not a god. Shoot him and he will die. Paris aims. The god touches his finger to the arrow's fletching. Then he breathes, a puff of air, as if to send dandelions flying to push toy boats over water. And the arrow flies, straight and silent, in a curving downward arc towards Achilles' back. Achilles hears the faint hum of its passage a second before it strikes. He turns his head a little, as if to watch it come. He closes his eyes and feels his point push through his skin, parting thick muscle, worming its way past the interlacing fingers of his ribs. There, at last, is his heart. Blood spills between shoulder blades, dark and slick as oil. Achilles smiles as his face strikes the earth. Servant girls are sent to collect the ashes. They carry them to the golden urn where I rest. Will I feel his ashes as they fall against mine? I think of the snowflakes on Pelion, cold on our red cheeks. The yearning for him is like hunger, hollowing me. Somewhere his soul waits, but it's nowhere I can reach. Bury us and mark our names above. Let us be free. His ashes settle among mine, and I feel nothing. How sad. People come to see his grave. Some hang back as if they are afraid his ghost will rise and challenge them. Others stand at the base to look at the scenes of his life carved on the stone. They are hastily done, but clear enough. Achilles killing Memnon, killing Hector, killing Penthesilea. Nothing but death. This is how Pyrus's tomb might look. Is this how he will be remembered? Thetis comes. I watch her, withering the grass where she stands. I have not felt such hatred for her in a long time. She made Pyrus and loved him more than Achilles. That's true. And she, she's looking at the scenes on the tomb, death after death. She reaches as if she will touch him. I cannot bear it. Thetis, I say. Her hand jerks back. She vanishes. Later, she returns. Thetis, she does not write. Only stands looking at her for those two. I am buried here, in your son's grave. She says nothing. Does nothing. She does not hear. Every day she comes. She sits at the tomb space, and it seems that I can feel her cold through the earth. The slight searing smell of salt. I cannot make her leave, but I can hate her. You said that Chiron ruined him. You are a goddess and cold and know nothing. You are the one who ruined him. Look at how he will be remembered now, killing Hector, killing Troilus, for things he did cruelly in his grief. Her face is like stone itself. It does not move. The day rise, the days rise and fall. Perhaps such things pass for virtue among the gods. But how is there glory in taking a life? We die so easily. Would you make him another Pyrus? Let the stories of him be something more. What more, she says. For once, I am not afraid. What else can she do to me? Returning Hector's body to Priam, I say. And that should be remembered. And? His skill with the lyre, his beautiful voice. The girls, he took them so that they would not suffer at another king's hands. Have you no more memories? I am made of memories. Speak then. Okay, so... Patroclus is recounting memories to Thetis, the mother of the man he loved. 
I almost refuse, but the ache for him is stronger than my anger. I want to speak of something not dead or divine. I want him to live. At first, it is strange. I'm used to keeping him from her and to hoarding him for myself. But the memories well up like spring water faster than I can hold them back. They do not, they do not come as words, but like dreams rising as sent from the rain-wet earth. This, I say, this and this. The way his hair looked in the summer sun, his face when he ran, his eyes solemn as an owl at lessons, this and this and this, so many moments of happiness crowding forward. She closes her eyes, the skin over them is a color of sand in winter. She listens, and she too remembers. I conjure the boy I knew, Achilles, grinning as a fig's blur in his hands, his green eyes laughing into mine. Catch, he says. This was like the first moment when Achilles was flirting with him. Achilles outlined against the sky, hanging from a branch over the river. The thick warmth of his sleepy breath against my ear. If you have to go, I will go with you. My fears forgotten in the golden harbor of his arms. The memories come and come. She listens, staring into the green of the stone. We are all there, goddess and mortal, and the boy who was both. Oh, that's beautiful. She does not answer me for a long time, only sits eyes shining with the last of the dying light. I have done it. She says, at first I do not understand, but then I see the tomb and the mark she made on the stone. Achilles, it reads. And besides, Patroclus, go, he waits for you. She fulfilled her son's wish. In the darkness, Two shadows reaching through the hopeless, heavy dusk. Their hands meet and light spills in a flood like a hundred golden urns pouring out of the sun. They meet and brightness explodes. <laughs> this book is too great. The people are right. Song of Achilles is such a great book. It's so funny how the author made Thetis to be this very cold woman. Oh, woman, goddess. And then she was actually the person who gave peace to our narrator, Patroclus, who she hated. But then perhaps throughout his stories, um, sharing the memories with Achilles, she could at least do this to him. And obviously, she found that like through Patroclus' story, she figured that they truly love each other and Achilles, like she knew that Achilles will be waiting for him. Like they had such a short life. Wow, I really enjoyed this book. This deserves five stars. Incredible. Incredible. Okay, I don't know how to wrap my thoughts. I look ravaged. I don't care. <laughs> okay.